Nobody gets into teaching for the money, the prestige, or the easy hours. If they do, they're in for a real heartbreak. We get into teaching to make connections with students, to help them find a passion for learning, to guide young people into becoming their best selves, and to open doors for their future. But over time, if you're not careful, it's really easy to lose focus of those goals. The stress is real and it can wear you down. You have to keep pace. If you stop running, if you stop caring, stop growing, it's way too easy to feel the pull to give up and get out. The world asks a lot of educators today, more than ever before. If we truly support and empower teachers, we can't leave 100% of the drive up to them. We need support from our communities, from our peers, from our building leaders. We need everyone's support to help us stay in education and be the teachers our students need us to be. My name is CJ Reynolds. I was a teacher in West Philadelphia for almost 20 years. It's so funny that I even became a teacher. I, I had no interest in teaching. I had no interest in school. I went to high school every day because my friends were there. Got out of high school, wanted to be a drummer, did that for a little while, realized I didn't want to live that lifestyle. So to make my parents even more nervous, I thought I wanted to be a clown. So I used to practice clowning all the time, but I didn't want to be in the circus. I wanted to travel to developing countries and meet folks on the margin that had been forgot about and do something that made them smile. So my wife and I lived for a little while in Zambia, Africa. So when I came home, I was kind of lost, wasn't sure what to do. And somebody suggested that maybe I'd be a teacher. And, you know, that just hit me because it was all of the things I had kind of been doing before all brought together. It was it's kind of like being on stage. You're trying to get people's attention. You are caring for people. You're loving kids at a time in their life when they really need it the most. And you kind of get to be a fool in public for kids. And so tried it and from the first week of teaching, I just knew that this is what I was given to do. This was, this is my job. After school on Friday, classic, I don't know what they're doing. They're looking. Happy Friday, everyone. First year of teaching was eye-opening, to say the least. I remember that first day of school and I had everything set up. My classroom was immaculately set up. And when that bell rang and I heard that horde of children coming down the hallway, I was immediately terrified because I, my fear was that no one would listen to anything that I said. And that was partially right. We had a project that we did that went horribly wrong. And I got so fed up that I remember asking the kids, well, what do you want to do? And they told me what they wanted to do. And we created something that was a collaboration between us and the students. And that changed the trajectory of my teaching for the rest of my career. Teaching is a craft. Teaching is like any other thing in your life that you're never good, really good at something right away. And if teachers stick with it, what they can do is grow into that craft. They can become the teacher that they always dreamed of being and that they were called to be. But that does take time. When I was five years in, I went from Camden, New Jersey to West Philadelphia. And the thing that really made me stay was I was surrounded by teachers that were going full tilt every single day in their classrooms. And it was so inspiring to be around that 
I was told yes about any idea more than I was told no. We were given permission to do whatever it took to help students become who they were meant to be. And that changes everything. When you're given that level of freedom, that level of support, you just feel like you walk into the classroom and think, well, what do we need to do to help these kids be who they are meant to be? Making the decision to leave is, is never easy. I didn't leave education because the kids got too difficult, even because we had six principals in three years. I mean, education is only ever about students, so I was showing up for kids anyway. But it was this feeling that there are a lot of things wrong with the education system. There are a lot of teachers that are struggling, that aren't getting the help and the support that they, not that they want, that they need to stay in the classroom and to be great teachers. And so that's when we made the shift full time to working with our company that now helps teachers to unlock that greatness, to be inspired, to be motivated, to show up to class and want to take over the classrooms again and work with students to create wonderful, incredible experiences. And so just as I felt called to go into the classroom, I think I'm just called to a much bigger classroom now. We have 600 students represented in USD 410. And staff, we have a little less than 100. And those come from the communities of Durham, Hillsborough, and Lehigh. The thing that sets us apart is the support that we receive from our community members. There's a, a level of trust that we give to our community and the community gives to us to ensure the best education for their kids. I have had the opportunity to, to work in other school districts and, and all have been positive experiences, but what separates um, USD 410 from, from some of those other places is truly the, the level of trust and the, and the belief that we're gonna do what's best for our kids, whether that be in the classroom winning national awards or on the court winning state championships. Um, Hillsborough is, is home to me, mostly because of, of the people here. It's mentors that I have here, family that I have here, who really pour into my life and that give me the ability to pour into others. I think that's, that's what makes Hillsborough really special to me. When people come, to work in Hillsboro, they typically are here to stay. As those teachers get older and they retire, there aren't as many people to come in and fill those positions. So we do have very similar struggles to the rest of the state in that regard. Every position that we have an opening for, it is a struggle to get applicants. In regards to filling our positions for bus drivers, we've actually had an open position all year long that we've been unable to fill. We've had some parents as teachers positions that we've been unable to fill. I think about it frequently, and I, I worry that there aren't going to be enough people coming into the field of education to fill those spots. And then I wonder, and what are we gonna to have to do differently? Over the next five to 10 years, we're going to lose 10 to 15 teachers. And so we have to figure out how we're gonna recruit and retain who we have on our staff. My name is Sonia Roberts, and I've taught agriculture education at Hillsborough for 17 years. Teaching, for me, is just something new every single day. Never teaching the same thing twice. I can start my day with freshmen and intro to ag, to like ag welding where my kids are out in the shop. The smiles on their faces when they've learned a new concept is probably the most rewarding. So the kids that are enrolled in my classes have an opportunity to join the FFA organization and then throughout high school they can participate in different activities on the state level or even on the national level. What I love about FA is the livestock component of it. 
I'm very fortunate because I have several businesses here in town that will support my students, whether it's allowing us to come out and tour the facility to see what business and industry is doing, or whether it is asking them for support during FFA week. I can remember when our daughter decided that she was going to teach. And, you know, of course that gives you the warm fuzzies and finally out on your own, making your own money, doing your own thing. First year was tough. It just was not an ideal situation for probably a first year teacher. Still dealing with COVID and teaching in a library with partitions and maybe a little bit of lack of support on administration, not giving her the resources that she needed. Second year came along, we were like, okay, it's gotta get better, it's gotta get better. I tried to stay very positive, tried to assist her. Things were going really, really well making great connections with the students, was getting excellent evaluations. And then come March, I got the call that she was not going to be renewed, which was very, very tough. I kind of felt like I let her down. I felt like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? I, my own daughter, you know, is struggling and, and how do I make it better for her? She was very fortunate. She interviewed shortly after spring break and um, recently just took a new position. And she is going somewhere where there is a veteran teacher right now. And she's not the, you know, the, the lone man on the totem pole. You've got to have that support system, whether you're a first year teacher or a teacher that's been teaching for 31 years. We need to rally around the young teachers because if we, if we want them to be around to take our spots, when we retire, we have got to be a support system for them because I really believe that you need people that will rally around you and walk with you through what you're going through on a daily basis. Hi, my name is Bailey Kaufman and I am a teacher here at Hillsborough High. I graduated from Hillsborough High School the teachers that I had here were really positive role models for me, really displayed what it means to have good character and just to be good people. And um, their influence on me kind of stuck with me as I went to college and as I tried to figure out what it was that I wanted to do. I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to have fame. I wanted to be on the camera. And I started to realize that that wasn't really the plan God wanted for my life and did a lot of soul searching. And when I started taking education classes and working with kids, it was so not about me, it was about the kids. I found so much purpose in that. So I knew I always wanted to be a teacher. However, Bailey, my sister, did not know that. And then all of a sudden she was told by a teacher, hey, you should think about education. And so it's cool that we both ended up in the same spot, even though our stories are a lot different. She has several other hobbies and interests, and so that's why high school works good for her, because she can do all those others while teaching. And I was more, I want to be around kids, I want to just be teaching, and that's why elementary works good for me. Having such a close relationship with her and her being a teacher too has been a really good outlet for both of us. Sometimes we come home and end up just sitting on our kitchen floor kind of recapping our day and we share our student stories and it's surprising how sometimes second graders and high schoolers are not that much different. My favorite part of the day is probably just greeting the students in the morning. I always will be in my classroom before the students come and it's just like, okay, I'm ready for the day. I think I have everything prepared. And then the bell rings and the students come down the hall and just seeing their excitement in second grade, they're still really happy, and in the morning, they're not like wanting to go back to bed. The academic side definitely matters, but if a kid is coming to school and had a hard morning, they're not gonna be able to learn like they should. And so I think just being there for the students and making sure they feel loved and accepted is a big thing that I believe in, and I think you can see the results. Something I love about teaching is the relationships that I get to form with them. Building this bond it's where we feel like a family, that's been the most special thing this year. And watch them fall in love with photography and videography and just discover some new passions. 
I think being a young teacher creates a unique connection with the students. I have some of the struggles maybe that they relate to more. It wasn't that long ago that I was in their shoes and I think that helps me. I love working here at Hillsboro just because the teachers care about one another. If you've had a hard day, others are there to listen. Whenever I would interview for teacher positions, they would always ask who was someone that I looked up to as a teacher, and I would always end up saying that I want to be a mix of pretty much all the teachers that I've had here at Hillsboro because each one would support me and come to things outside of class. And so it's really cool to be here with them and to watch them um, continue to love on their students. It's in the same students that I now get to love on. When you are supported by your community, you feel respected and you feel like you're trusted because those are your parents of the students. So if you're not supported by them, it's gonna be hard. And I think in order to be a good teacher, you need to have that trust, knowing that what you're doing in the classroom, it's important and people are caring about what you're doing. So when you have their respect and their trust, you're gonna work harder and you're gonna try your best and do what you can for your students. My invitation for parents to be supporting their teachers is to care about what their kids are learning, what their kids are doing, how their kids are behaving, coming to parent-teacher conferences, and caring about those grades and holding their students accountable is a big, big piece of the picture that helps teachers. Advice that I would give to um, a district maybe struggling with teacher retention is to give your teachers freedom. I think that's a key reason why I've stayed at Hillsborough is because I feel like I have creative freedom. I feel like there's a sense of trust um, that I know what I'm doing and that I can lead my classroom, but also a willingness from administration to step in when needed. Sports, that's what paved the way for me to get to where I am today. Sports is just that outlet that I always went to when I find those hard times. There's nothing like it. It is a joy to watch young people compete. It revs you up, now you gotta try to tone it down for the smaller city. But I would say the smaller community should show now to come out and support on Friday nights. Dan does a great job. Student body shows up for support. I mean, it's just rocking on Friday nights in a small town Hillsboro. I would be lying if I said I thought the next 17 years of my life would be stuck in Hillsboro, Kansas. I don't think that was part of my plans, but I think it was power of a higher plan. I played my high school ball in Orlando, Florida. After completing high school ball in Orlando, Florida, I played a year and a half in Iowa. And then in 07 is when I transferred in to Hillsboro, Kansas. It's where my journey started. The culture shock is totally different than where you come from. But as a whole, this community all have shaped me into the person I am today. I started off as a paraeducator. My first year, it was challenging, but I would say I felt needed within the profession. From there, I went on and did a master program of being a spade at teacher. I had a heart for those who felt less motivated, who seemed like they were being overlooked. And been having a kid of my own who was in special ed, just wanted me to get more depth and more stronger in that area of education. Seeing a kid that goes on to have success after graduating USD 410 who come through the special education system, let me know that I played a vital role in that kid's life. The way I feel about coaching and the way I want to feel like I'm giving back to those younger athletes is not to focus on the wins and losses, but focus on the time you get to spend with them. Send young man that goes off and start a family. That is more beneficial to me than winning and losing. A game is how do they develop as young men, become better role models to their families and community. The support we have received from Ben and Hillsboro is tremendous. I think it showed more clear to us as a family when we lost our son. 
coming from a bigger city to a smaller one, you see things and learn things that you do not in a bigger city. My experience during that tough time from the moment we got the news, the way they fought and came to us and provided us with support during that time from his elementary school teachers to his middle school teachers to his high school teachers, all to his peers. I think that just showed love. And just to say, we don't know what you're experiencing, but we're here with you. We don't know your tears, but we're here to wipe them. And I think all of that played a vital role, not just in helping us through that process, but help keeping us grounded in here. And I would say that what it showed me, love has no color. And I would say during that time, I really found out what community love is. My thought on the need to support teachers, especially those first year, second year teachers, you find an area and a building that supports you and that accept you, that make you feel like not only you need it, but you're needed back to them to fill up their picture as well. So our goal is to always remain competitive in salaries to get the best people, making sure that we're providing the best possible insurance, especially talking about retention. As our staff get older, we need better insurance. Another thing that we've been doing is we have added a bonus for teachers who have graduated from the teen network, which is a group of neighboring schools. So if there's someone from Marion that wants to come over and teach in Hillsboro, they would qualify for that bonus. We have a strong school board that supports administration and our teachers, and they'll do whatever we can to hire the best people. Any teacher that feels supported, value, and seen will stay at a school. It is everything. Teachers show up because they want to help kids. This, is, this isn't a hobby. This isn't a, a job that you get for you know, weekends off and summers off. This is a job that you move into because it was the work you've been given to do. And so when we can tell someone, I see you, I love what you're trying to do. When we can show up and do those three things for teachers, what we're doing is, is honoring them as the professionals that they are, the masters of the craft that they are and helping them grow to that next level. By 10. Yes, go real quick, by 10. How do we keep okay, teachers in school? Well. You know, over the last 10 years or so, we've had a lot of teachers who have turnover or quit the professions or, you know, move from one school to another, and we want to decrease that. Before the pandemic, about um, 15 to 16% of teachers turn over every year and about half of that nationally are teachers going from one school to another. And about half, seven, eight percent, are teachers leaving the profession altogether. Those are the folks that are in some sense that we want to work harder to retain because once those folks leave, it's very unlikely that they, they're gonna come back. We actually have a paper that looks exactly at uh, teacher intentions and teacher actual turnover behavior. And what we found is that teacher intentions do not measure up exactly to their own behavior. So a teacher can say in April that they're thinking about leaving the profession. That doesn't always translate them to actually leaving the profession because it's not so easy to just quit your job and find another one. Bills have got to be paid still at the end of the day. So it may take teachers two, three years to shore up their resume, find a different career to leave. This was sort of where we, we think about the positive side of this. That means that, that principals, administrators, superintendents can actually affect teachers' intention and prevent them from leaving the profession. If teachers are saying they're thinking about leaving, that indicates to me that they're stressed out, they're burnt out, and they need support in order to stay where they are. Administrators, we can help with that, right? There are things that we can do, listening to teachers, see where they need help and support so that we can help them stay in their classroom. The Shawnee Mission School District is the third largest school district in the state of Kansas, and we serve 26,500 students. We serve a large staff, a little over 2,000 certified staff members and about 1,200 classified staff members. There's definitely a challenge to recruit staff to serve in all capacities. 
Over the course of their career, we have teachers that are committed to Shawnee Mission and stay in Shawnee Mission. That generation of teachers is starting to retire, as well as we have the challenge of, you know, it's real. There are people leaving the teaching profession as well. And so all of those bring us challenges. Take your pockets out of the way. Last year, we hired 240 certified staff members. And the year before that, 280 certified staff members. So we know we can't continue at that rate of hiring. Luck. We have to really move into focusing just as much effort, if not more, on what's our retention plan and then developing that plan. In my role as Director of Elementary Human Resources, I get to really focus in on recruitment and retention. And that's a big challenge for us in a district of this size. And so we work together on attending recruitment events, developing partnerships with universities. And it was about three years ago that we decided in Shawnee Mission, we really wanted to involve teachers in our recruitment efforts. And that's when we developed the Shawnee Mission School District recruit team, and we call them SMSD Recruit. When we developed the recruitment team, the concept behind that was it takes all of us, and it takes all of us sharing our stories. And it's been amazing to really see them work together and see first-year teachers on a district team sharing ideas and having a voice, and then also having the other teachers there to share and mentor them and generate ideas based on their experience. We are going to have a different style of bell work that has to do with creative writing or narrative that you guys are writing. At this point in my career, I'm really looking for opportunities to grow beyond being solely a classroom teacher. So I really look for opportunities to have voice and advocacy and the sorts of things that drive our school and drive our district. And I think that the, the recruitment committee has definitely given me a, an opportunity to be seen and to have the voice that allows me to advocate for a topic that I'm truly passionate about, which is teacher professionalism and making sure that teachers feel seen and feel belonged, but also feel respected for the very hard work that they do. I have really valued the opportunity to contribute to that because I'm speaking my experience. I'm, I'm talking about my lived truths that I see within the classroom and the challenges that I face as a teacher. Even one who's experienced, I still struggle with a lot of the same sorts of things that a new teacher struggles with because it's a very demanding job. And I think it speaks to the excellence of our district that they have realized that this is a crisis that needs to be addressed. There are a lot of teachers leaving and there are a lot of teachers who are experienced who are leaving. So we have to figure out a way to support them and make sure that they feel seen and that they have an opportunity to leave a mark in something that is maybe greater than their classroom. The kind of work that the committee has done has all been teacher driven. And I think that that is the most powerful thing about the retention and recruitment group. You know, oftentimes in education, you may have some sort of reform that's going to come down or some policy that's geared towards, you know, fixing an issue that is perceived. But it's really hard to see how that will really play out in the classroom day to day. But making sure that teachers are central to this work and they're driving the vision of it allows us to really pick up ideas from the practitioners who are on the grounds. We want to make sure that we're keeping quality educators in the classroom, so we need to know what quality educators need. Bringing all those people together, you can really start to see what needs to be done to address some of the, the problems and challenges that we're facing. The perspective of experience and the wisdom of age in the profession is you get to help new teachers survive often the hardest part of the entire professional career that they will have. Those first three years are a doozy. <laughs> um, and that is where we see a lot of the turnover. But we, in our committee and we as a profession, are trying to figure out ways to make sure that we are supporting them and also supporting the people that we have who have been around for a while. So it's a challenge. If a superintendent is looking for ways that they can make an impact and make a meaningful movement towards addressing retention and recruitment, they have to talk to their teachers and say, like, what is it that is challenging for you and what do you need to make yourself feel valued and respected and make yourself feel like 
this is a place that you want to spend the next 30 years of your life. A focus for our Shawnee Mission Retention Plan is health and wellness and work-life balance for our employees. One way that we're supporting that is through our Priority One Health Clinic that's on campus for our employees and their families. And we're able to get in our employees during the school day to support their health needs. And then we also have a district gym for our employees and their families. And so it's a great way for them to take care of themselves and connect with others from across the district. One thing that came out of our discussions as a team around the employee engagement was that people wondering, how do I have different opportunities? How do I, do I dive into uh, wanting to become an interventionist or an instructional coach or administration? And the conversation then became, well, how do people know all of the different leadership opportunities that we have in the school district? And so that's when we decided as a team, we were going to develop kind of a map of different opportunities. And that way, when staff see those opportunities, they can start saying, that connects with a passion of mine, and that's something that I wanna look forward to doing in the future. I think it's really important that we have conversations with our staff about where you see yourself in three years, where you see yourself in five or 10 years, and then how do we as leaders help develop those opportunities and guide them and mentor them for those opportunities. The idea of becoming a principal was a little scary, but I thought, I think that this is something that I can do. I'm passionate about being there for teachers and being there for kids. When I made the decision to pursue my leadership, I had a principal who saw something in me and actually recommended me for the program. I remember so vividly, I've had wonderful administrators in Shawnee Mission, and I think about what they did for me as a teacher and the ways that they made me feel supported and how they modeled that you have to take care of the adults in your building so that the adults can take care of the kids. Something unique about Shawnee Mission School District is we really believe in growing your own. Shawnee Mission has a partnership with Kansas State where we do the educational leadership, the principal program where you can go into building administration and Shawnee Mission and K-State work together to do those courses. Being able to do that work at the district office and being able to just talk about different scenarios of things that are happening in Shawnee Mission, working with our strategic plan, really helped me feel comfortable and confident and ready into moving into a leadership role in Shawnee Mission. So when I think about that 26% of teachers that are leaving the profession or maybe moving to find a new school home, I just have to wonder if they had felt like there was that open communication with their building principal or with their school community of what are things that we can do to support you, to help you feel like you can stay here and be successful and keep that place your school home. Because when we've opened the discussion and conversation with our teachers in Shawnee Mission, we're just learning that that's so much of what teachers want, is they want to be heard and just to know the why. If things can't change or aren't able to change at that time, just sharing the why of why that can't be a possibility. And then let's try to work on the things that we can change. It means a lot to teachers just to, to be heard. What's this one? When I think about why the work of, you know, retaining teachers is so important is this is our future. <laughs> you know, kids are our future and we want to take care of kids and we want to give kids all of the experiences, but we have to think about the adults that are in front of them. And so when I think about teachers that I know that have left the profession, I just have to wonder, is there something more that we could have done? Was that question asked? of them, like what did you need to be able to stay? Then I think the work of the Shawnee Mission recruit team, the creative ideas that we're, we're putting out on the table, it's a start because we have to start somewhere and we have to see what's gonna work. 
Tatiana was a member of our committee that spoke at our negotiations meeting that we had at the district where we shared with our NEA and our district team about the efforts that we were doing to increase teacher retention. And the things that she shared as a first year teacher, the opportunities that she had, the way that she could showcase her voice, it was really, really cool to see. And I think that's such an important thing for teachers to feel heard. As a first year teacher, it was very crucial to being part of the recruitment team just because of the support. And I felt like I wasn't alone. There were moments that I was able to talk with veteran teachers and tell them my frustrations about my day or how, uh, how awesome my day was and they could relate. And they could tell me, it's just your first year. You're gonna be okay. After the second one, it's just gonna be a breeze for you. A few tips that I would give first year teachers or students that are going into education would be to not stress. You're gonna learn a lot. And then you, as a teacher, you learn something new every day, whether it is as your lesson, about yourself, about the students. There's always something new to learn. The second advice I would give you is connect with people whether it is in your department, whether it is with the principal, whether it is with the recruitment team, with past professors at K-State, because I feel like those are always good resources to go to when you have an issue or when you're just feeling overwhelmed or when you don't know what to do. A, B is worth eight, right? Could be centimeters, could be meters, could be whatever, eight. To be Successful and to last, I think in education, it's all about finding a community that welcomes you and finding the perspective to see that while one day may be bad, in the grand scheme, you will always have more positive experiences with your students than you really will have negative ones. You may have a couple of kids who give you quite a day, but then you have another hundred who have giving you opportunities to laugh and smile. I don't think you can use your Dusty story, Camilla, I'm sorry. Like, I love your... You know, one thing I've learned through working with the Shawnee Mission School District recruitment team kind of takes me back to being a principal and how important it is that you build a team and you build a diverse team with people bringing different experiences and different ideas. It's been amazing to see that in this team. When you bring strong people together that are committed to the work and that want to collaborate and grow together and are focused on the work, it's amazing what can come of it. There are a lot of teachers that might be watching this that are feeling that they're not living up to their potential, that are feeling like maybe they want to leave the classroom, maybe they want to leave teaching as a whole. And I would implore them to really think about that in terms of, have you given it enough time to grow into who you want to be? That kids don't want to learn just because you want to teach. When teachers are struggling with students, there's two things that you can do to, to really kind of fix that, or, or at least to start moving the needle in the right direction. One of those is, it's a buzz term, but self-care really helps. And I don't mean self-care like a box of wine and watching Netflix all weekend, although maybe that might be, might be necessary, but it is really pouring into yourself things that are life-giving, doing things that you used to do when you were younger that give you life, that you can then take that energy and turn it into your classroom. Sleeping enough, eating right, exercise, all those regular things are going to make you show up on a higher level for your kids. The other thing is, I think oftentimes when teachers are really struggling, they're focusing on problems. They're focusing on all those students who won't kind of act the part or, or get in line with what's happening in class. And I think there's two things you do there. Either you need to change what you're doing in class or you need to look at different kids sometimes. There's a student in your class right now that thinks that they're invisible. Your job is to let them know that they're visible. Your job is to say hello to them, find out what they're interested in, take those interests and turn that into a lesson in your classroom that will make that child want to come to school. So an individual teacher can make a, a life trajectory difference in the life of a child. What we haven't put as much emphasis on is that that same teacher can make a life trajectory change in the life of a peer. So I think we all, every one of us in the educational profession has 
a responsibility to support those around us. So I believe the building level principle has the greatest impact on teacher retention. The superintendent and the school board can set things like base salary and professional learning opportunities, etc. But the building principle sets the culture. And we know from the national research data that is the number one impact on teacher retention. What is the culture like in my building? Is it a place that I look forward to going to each and every day? Does it lift me up? Do I feel supported? When I have challenges, is there a support structure there? Am I able to share my joy with other, other teachers in the, the building? The building level leader is the one instrumental for setting that positive culture. Hi, my name is Dave Martinez and I'm the building principal here at Dwight D. Eisenhower Middle School in Manhattan, Kansas. Dwight D. Eisenhower is a building of 6th through 8th grade students. We have about uh, 750 students that attend here. This is my 10th year as an administrator here at Eisenhower Middle School. And within those time frames, I noticed that we were starting to have more and more teachers that were starting to leave the profession. Teachers that still had a lot to give, but they were to that point where with the stress of our students, with attendance, with academics, with behaviors, that we felt like we needed to make a change. And so coming out of COVID, things really ramped up in trying to teach students to go back to school again. The culture of the building, the culture of education wasn't very positive. We, as a staff, was trying to figure out what we needed to focus as a building-wide strategy. We put something together by using Safe and Civil Schools where we implemented the CHAMPS model where it's school-wide. So there's consistency among how we are teaching our kids. We went away from these are our rules to these are our expectations for you, for the culture that we're creating here at Eisenhower Middle School. That has really helped us with the attendance piece, with the academics piece, and most importantly, that behavior piece. We want our staff to come to Eisenhower Middle School and come to school every day and not have to deal with those things because what I'm doing in my class is the same thing that the previous teacher's doing, and so there's that consistency. As you know, when you're implementing change, you're always gonna have some resistance from staff, from sometimes from administration. One thing that has really helped us in helping each other, hold each other accountable, is the leadership teams that we've created within our building. Those leadership teams are the transparency between administration to our staff. As you can tell, I've had s several eye surgeries that have caused me to miss quite a bit of school within the last couple years. And because the past two years, we have really implemented leadership teams within our building that when I'm gone, things function as if I was here because our, our leadership teams take over and our leadership teams just don't happen within our admin team where you would think leadership happens. We have several staff members that do awesome things as we inspire and encourage them to lead. We have building leadership teams, we have team leaders, we have champs training teams where our staff is modeling the things that we want to have happen to create the culture that we're creating here. I'm not creating a culture here that it's me as the building leader. I just kind of set the expectations and then our leadership teams take those things back to our building teams and start having those conversations and they help hold each other accountable. Through our current leadership, Mr. Martinez, Mr. Neal, Mr. Ackerman, this is their second year all together as a team. They last year came in 
as a, a whole staff decided that there were some things we really needed to focus on at the end of the previous school year and so we hit it hard at the beginning of last school year. I'm going to say that they just work so well together. One thing great that Dave does is he delegates. He just says, I don't know everything. I'm not an expert at everything. And so I'm going to bring in people who know stuff and I'm going to rely on them. And that, first of all, it, it helps all of us, you know, work to our strengths. But also that's him telling us, you know, I value you and what you do and you know your background and your knowledge. I think everybody relies on everybody else and so we work together well as a team. Dave is also, and, and Shane and Craig, they're all our biggest cheerleaders. <laughs> we know that they'll back us up and they have our back and, and if we wanna try something, yeah, I'm gonna support you and, and you know, I'm, you're gonna try it and if it you know, fails, so what? It didn't work, so we go back to the drawing board, we try something else, and I'll still be your biggest cheerleader. Daisy, she was rehomed to me when she was six. She's really the one that inspired me to pursue this therapy dog thing. What she does for kids, I can't even put into words. She just is unconditional acceptance uh, of any kid or uh, adult. Dave supported me from day one. Sometimes he was more excited than I was, I think, that we were even pursuing this. Teaching, even though you're, you're in a building with 750 kids and more than 100 adults, it can be a very closed off or very lonely kind of position because class starts and you're in front of a class and you know, in front of 10, 20, 30 students, and it's it's just you as the adult. The success and the people that stay in our building is because they have that connection to the other adults in the building. You have to have somebody that you can go to and trust. And if you don't have your teacher BFF, it's hard to come to work every day. It's hard because what do you do when you're struggling? What do you do when you're not sure what to do? So we have a lot of knowledge education-wise but we also just have a support system emotionally. I feel like Eisenhower is, is a family. If I need something, they're there for me. One of the most important things to retain great teachers in the building is gonna be just support. Once you have 10 years, 12 years, 20 years in the profession, you need to make sure you're giving back. I was personally blessed to, to really sit in the classroom with some great teachers early on. The teacher that, that I student taught with was incredible about classroom management and really making kids not only want to learn geography, but to make sure that kids were responsible for their own actions and really put it back on that. She had an incredible way of, of talking to kids and, and just saying, you know, I'm, I'm sorry you made a bad decision, but here's how we're going to fix it. New teachers need to understand that we are here for them, that we'll do whatever we can for you. And inside of school, outside of school, uh, we'll be there for you. Having them also understand you're not alone in this. <laughs> Everybody's going through maybe the same types of situations and, and don't try to just put it all on yourself. And I think that's what Mr. Martinez has done a good job with is I, I might be gone, but we have other administrators, we have counselors, we have social workers that are all here and on the same page of we need to work together and make sure that, you know, the, the school is functioning like it should. So coming into teaching as a second career, is it's fulfilling for me because I came from the world of medicine where you had COVID and you had all of these other things that were kind of piling up and then you had this mass exodus of teachers and I saw the need for more teachers and for people who really, really care. Making that change later in life was a huge step, but as I'm in here and doing this every day, I, I feel a purpose, I feel fulfilled. I feel like I'm, if I'm making a difference in one kid's life, then I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. My experience so far with administration has been they wholeheartedly are here for the kids and they're here for us as teachers 
but to also set a culture within the school that it's positive and that everybody is cared for and voices will be heard. You can reach out to any of them at any point and they're always willing to make you feel like it's not a silly question, especially coming from a first year teacher. I never know. Is this silly? Is, is this classroom management, is it me? Or is it just, you know, this, the dynamic of these kids? And they always make you feel like it's okay. Here at Eisenhower, we do several things to make teachers feel like they're important, because they are. The Bragg and Wagon is one of them, and we have a list of what each teacher in the building loves. Different teachers present to different people who they think are deserving of a little extra recognition. I received it and couldn't believe that I was receiving it. You know, as a first year teacher, you kind of think, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I doing a good job? And so receiving it, it does make you feel like, okay, this I am doing okay, and, and what I'm doing is making a difference. So teacher retention is a hard question for me to answer because I spent 15 years in another profession and came into this, and so it's new and it's fun to me. Um, those that have been here and been through different administration and those who have dealt with the ups and downs of students, it's, it's crazy. You can have a great class and then you can have another class that comes in and, and they really struggle. They struggle with authority, they struggle with with rules and expectations. So retaining teachers, I think a huge part of it is for them to feel as if they are valued. And I think at Eisenhower we do that with all of the incentive programs and just the positive interactions you have with administration and with your co-teachers and, and the students that we have here, they're incredible. I'm so grateful of the opportunity to be blessed to be the principal of Eisenhower Middle School. My administrative team and their hard work and their effort, this is something that I can't do by myself. And surrounding myself with great people has helped me to begin the journey of changing a culture here at Dwight D. Eisenhower. To our teachers, to our staff, I want to thank them for their hard work, for buying in. We're still moving towards in a positive direction to get there, to create that culture, to have an impact on transforming not just the culture, but our academics with our students. Our staff has just worked really hard in buying into those things, and, and, and I thank them for that, because it's gonna take all of us. It's gonna take all of us as a community. Everyone is connected to our school in one way or another. It's gonna take all of us. And I just thank everyone for their hard, their efforts in getting us to where we want to be. The public that includes parents' communities, what they can do, I think, is to, to remember that teachers are professional. At the end of the day, they have been trained to do this work, and we need to trust them to do this work. We need to have faith in teachers again. And part of that, we need to raise the respect and prestige to teachers in the teaching profession. But in fact, teaching is one of the most difficult jobs that we have because you have to know your content area, you have to know how to teach, and at the end of the day, you also know how to deal with you know, 20 and 30 kids at any given time you know, for the whole day. When we think about what policymakers can do in order to uh, address the teacher vacancy issue, one of the things that you should think about is making targeted decisions in order to get the right teacher in the right subject to where they're needed. In the long run, however, we really have to think about increasing the, the respect, prestige, and salary for all teachers because we're not going to have a healthy education system, a healthy teacher supply, if people do not want to join the teaching profession. So I think we all can agree that teachers don't go into the profession for the money, but at the same time, teachers aren't martyrs. You know, they do need to be able to provide for themselves, provide for their families. What we see is that teacher wages have stagnated over the past 30 years. So, you know, whereas there used to be maybe a 14% gap for being a teacher compared to being another uh, college educated professional, um, you know, even after accounting for things like the shorter work year and other teacher characteristics, you know, that has really widened over the past 30 years such that now that wage gap is more like a 20% 
wage gap. So it's become harder to make a living as a teacher. When I think about pre-service teachers, there is a lot of anxiety there. And what I always implore folks that are about to step into the classroom is that you cannot wait to be the teacher you dreamed of being. The world doesn't have time, your students don't have time for you to play it safe, for you to wait for tenure, for you to feel out the school first. You need to show up and be an explosion of awesome for your kids. The world can't wait for you to do anything other than that. If you wait three years in a day for your tenure to kick in, it's too late. I will never forget my first day of teaching in the classroom, and I will never forget my last. That first year was the hardest thing I had ever done. It was fun, it was exciting, it was terrifying all at the same time. The energy in the room was electric, and it sustained me for 17 years. And even though I've transitioned from teaching in the classroom to supporting teachers, I still get those same feelings working and supporting the next generation of educators. To educators that are newer to the profession, I would say that the first year in the classroom might be the hardest thing you've ever done. But remember, you're not alone in this. Look around your school to find like-minded educators to partner with to create something awesome. Remember that you can only teach great when you feel great. Put time, energy, and love into yourself first. Fill yourself up so you can give abundantly. To seasoned teachers, never underestimate the good that you can do in supporting teachers around you. Make them feel welcome. Get to know them. Be the kind of mentor you wish you had when you first got started. To administrators, the number one thing teachers are looking for is your support. When you create a culture where teachers want to show up, you empower them to be the teachers that they always dreamed of being, the teacher your students need them to be. At the end of the day, teachers want to feel needed, valued, supported, and seen. When a school and a community can do all those things, teachers will choose to stay. <laughs>